So I don't know if this is gonna work because I haven't recorded on my laptop before but I'm gonna give it a go. At the moment I'm baking hot cross buns, they're just in the oven and so I thought I'd record while I have like 15 minutes left for them to bake. I'm not sure if they're gonna work because the yeast didn't look as frothy as it usually does after I proofed it so we'll see. But Anyway, in the meantime, I received a question on YouTube on my last video, which was asking why I receive, or why I still have eating disorder thoughts so frequently. And so I thought I'd address that in this video and I made a blog post about this as well because it is a really good question and one that I have wondered about a lot and asked my therapist desperately several times. So yeah, I thought I'd talk about that today. I also do want to say though that in these videos, I really highlight things that are challenging to me. So the number or amount of eating disorder thoughts that you see me having in these videos might be disproportionate to reality because I try to film the hard times as well as some of the good times but probably the hard times come across more because I feel like that's more helpful for people. I don't know. The question why do you still have eating disorder thoughts so frequently I've translated really to mean why aren't you recovered yet? So I've had an eating disorder for I don't know how long. I remember having disordered thoughts around food and my body and weight when I was 10 years old and I'm now 25. So it's been a while that I've had disordered thought patterns. I started recovery in 2017, then relapsed in 2018 and then committed to recovery in 2019. So I've been in recovery now for one and a half to two years, somewhere around there, I think. And I don't have an exact number because the process of committing to recovery itself took a bit of time for me. And it really annoys me that I'm not recovered, of course. I would like very much not to have as many eating disorder thoughts. I mean, no one chooses to live with an eating disorder, do they? And no one wants a really long recovery process either because it's really hard, it's really tiring, it's time consuming, it's not enjoyable process in the least. So, and I get frustrated with myself often because, or I used, well, I try not to, but I do get frustrated with myself because I see others on social media who've recovered after six months or so, and I think, well, why haven't I recovered yet? What are they doing that I'm not? Why can't my brain heal already? And comparing to others, of course, doesn't do anyone any good, and... I think we all have def probably slightly different definitions of what in recovery versus recovered means anyway. And I have clear or clear enough definitions in my head for how I distinguish them. But these are probably a bit different to how other people distinguish them. So I've just watched that video back and I feel like the quality is kind of bad. So I'm going to switch to my phone, I think, for the rest of the recording. Um, but yeah, basically, that's my introductory rant. And there are many reasons why I'm probably not recovered yet. And I will address those shortly, but I am going to go check on my hot cross buns. Okay, they're not quite done yet so I can talk a little bit more. So one of the reasons or the most common reason that my therapist comes up with when I ask her and which I agree with is that it takes a long time for the brain to develop the neural pathways that 
will ultimately eliminate the eating disorder thoughts, if that makes sense. So for however many years, it could have been 15 years or something like that, my brain has had these thought patterns that skipping lunch is good or lettuce is a healthy meal or something like that and it takes a long time to firstly identify those thought patterns then unravel them and then create new thought patterns through repeated actions doing the opposite so having something decent for lunch and not skipping meals so that that whole process of creating new thought patterns and new habits takes a while and a lot of patience another reason that recovery can take a long time is is that the process is not linear so i talked about this in a video recently how I think we expect for recovery to go from illness and then committing to recovery and then an upward linear trajectory to full health. But unfortunately, recovery is not like that. Life happens, a pandemic happens, treatments don't work sometimes, and all these things mean that recovery is the recovery process is slowed down a bit so I'm not saying that it's okay to use eating disorder behaviors when life gets hard but I also think we need to acknowledge that these things happen we slip up sometimes and then ultimately we get back on the recovery train and continue going but we do slip up it happens So I've just put the buns in for another minute, they're almost done and then when they are done I'm going to go with mum to get a coffee so we're really lucky we can still get takeaway coffees in this lockdown which really helps my mood a lot and then I'll have a hot cross bun or two for morning tea and I'll finish what I was saying a bit later. I just made a small batch to test out the recipe and also they don't really last so yeah I can always make more. Mum's not ready yet so I can record a bit more. So another reason recovery can take some time is because it takes a while to work out actually how to recover. Yeah. So for example in my experience I started off at a private practice that recommended FBT or family-based therapy that didn't work for me. Then I went to, I joined the public service and went to a therapist who used a different technique that also did not work for me. Then I relapsed, then I ended up in residential treatment that didn't work for me either. First of all, I recognise that I'm really privileged to have been able to receive these therapy techniques, receive these therapies. And second of all, my experiences aren't necessarily a reflection of the treatments themselves, but rather show how important it is to find a treatment that works for the individual. Because there are many ways to recover but it's a matter of finding what works for you and I think we see that as well on social media with like the all-in technique which seems to work really well with some people and is really popular at the moment whereas other people prefer a slow and steady approach with a meal plan or something like that so different things work for different people and 
whichever option works for you. It's not necessarily better than any other option. It's just all about how you can recover. But so it takes some time. Also, in my case, I did a lot of research on various techniques. Takes that that whole process takes a lot of time. And then during the process of recovery, certain techniques that worked for you at the start might not work so well at the midway point and then you have to switch things up again so yeah it can take a while another point that i want to mention is that i am challenging every aspect of my eating disorder i could stop now and live a life of almost recovered and like pe other people probably wouldn't know they would I would I could convince them that I am recovered I could easily I could convince myself as well I believe that I am recovered but I don't want to settle for almost recovered I want full recovery so body acceptance or neutrality, total freedom around food, and no eating disorder thoughts. And I know that all of this is possible because I've heard recovery, recovered people who say it, and the closer that I get to full recovery, the more that I believe what they say to be true as well. Okay, we're going now, which is great because I need coffee. <laughs> So I'm going to go and make something to eat shortly, but there are two other things that I wanted to mention before I finish this video. So one of the reasons that I might still have a lot of eating disorder thoughts could be because my body's not yet at its healthy weight. So I've said before that my weight has been stable for over a year now, and I do think that I'm probably at or very close to my set point because I there are a lot of mental and also physical indicators of that like I don't get extreme hunger anymore um, I don't think about food all the time um, my period is regular I have energy <laughs> um, so I think that I probably am close to my body's healthy weight but I also think it would be a mistake to rule out the possibility that I might need to gain more weight and my aim at the moment is to focus on losing any eating disorder behaviors any possible sneaky restriction and so if my body does need to gain weight then that should just happen I think and I also think that it's really helpful to my recovery to continue acting as if I'm trying to gain weight. So big portions, regular snacks, and also reiterating to myself that it's okay, it's good to gain weight. And it doesn't matter if I gain weight. Because then I'm showing my brain repeatedly that gaining weight or the actions of trying to gain weight are nothing to be afraid of because I really want to rewire my brain's fear of weight gain because I don't believe that weight gain is bad like rationally I do not believe that at all and I so I just really want my brain to to stop having this fear response to weight gain which has got a lot better through my recovery um, it's not as, I guess it's not as frightening as it used to be, 
but still a way to go. And then finally, I just want to say that everyone's recovery journey is different, which may lead to your recovery or my recovery or someone else's recovery taking longer than someone else on social media. And I've been, personally, I've been hugely privileged in my recovery. Um, I'm a white, cis, straight woman who fits the stereotype of an anorexic. And, like, I didn't have a hard time convincing my doctor that I need to be referred to an eating disorder service. I have a safe place to live and financial support and all of those things mean that recovery is a lot easier for me but I do want to take a moment to recognize people who are having a harder time in recovery people who live in larger bodies or don't fit the eating disorder stereotypes don't have as much support all these things and more reasons can mean that recovery is a lot harder and takes longer and I don't say that me having those privileges means that my recovery is perfect because it is by no means perfect at all um, there have definitely been mistakes along the way my support system is very kind but I mean not perfect either and I'm not gonna complain about my retreat <laughs> I'm not gonna complain about my treatment right now either um, but I, yeah, I just want to say that everyone's journey is different and that means that sometimes it can take longer than six months or whatever, however long someone else takes. So ultimately, none of us really have a choice in how long it takes us to recovery as long as we're, ultimately, none of us really have a choice in how long it takes us to recover all we can do is keep trying our best day after day and I definitely fall down sometimes but then I get back up and that's just the journey. So I'm not fully recovered yet, I do still get eating disorder thoughts and I'm really transparent about that but I do hope and believe that I will get to full recovery and I don't think that it will be too far off. Okay, I'm going to end this video here so that I can go and make some food because I'm hungry. But I hope that you're keeping safe and well. Thank you for watching and sending you lots of love. Bye.